Well, listen, in the past, one century ago, there were places with Catholics only, Protestants only, Muslims or Jews only. But today, we have a multi-religious population. People want to know each other and want to live together. And therefore, those in charge of religious communities have to come together with others and find solutions to coexist. The relationship of religion to government. My position has been that an effective governance of today's world has to take into account the contribution that religion provides. Of crucial importance is that together we apply effectively the mechanisms created by the Security Council and to block any channels of support to terrorist groups, including the Islamic State, Jabhat el Nasra and others similar to them. We support the initiatives of Christian and Muslim leaders in the region against attempts of any extremists that misrepresent and pervert the high moral principles of the great world religions. Calling it a war of religions today is a bit absurd. I never saw before such consensus between religious leaders and between religious groups. There is a widespread religious blossom but states seem to be fighting against this phenomenon. Unfortunately, Japan still has the death penalty and also some countries in East Asia still have it. I am an abolitionist. The first reason is the right to life. Secondly, the risk that the court system makes an error. I am for the elimination of capital punishment under international human rights law. There is no evidence that the death penalty deters any particular crime, including drug-related crimes. The right to life should take priority over everything, and therefore protection of the individuals and his, his or her dignity is paramount. But I also wanted to add that the greatest predictor of who retains the death penalty in the Americas is not public opinion, it is not the rate of crime, it is colonial heritage. The question is not only to raise awareness that the basic human right of freedom of religion or belief is respected, but it is the raising of awareness of how to deal with these huge problems that we are facing today. Violence does not stem from religion, but from its false interpretation or its transformation into ideology. Interreligious communication has a key function in all agendas to prevent and overcome violence in the name of religion. People who regularly meet across boundaries will certainly realize that followers of other religions are not aliens with totally different mentalities. Nobody, no law, international or national, can oblige me to respect the belief or the religion of anyone. And I must be always free to express my disagreement, my criticism, my despise, my abhorrence for some beliefs. So, no human rights without freedom of expression. I would say the same is true for freedom of religion. No human rights, the entire system of human rights protection depends on respect for human dignity. How can you respect human dignity? without respecting that existential dimension, which is, of course, it comes out in very, very, very different forms, and we have not endorsed everything, but the general dimension that human beings hold profound existential identity-shaping convictions and also have to organize their lives, shape their lives in accordance with these convictions. How can you? The answer, not at all. The organization of la cooperation islamique uh, condemn energically uh, all the actions. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation firmly condemns all violent and criminal acts committed by terrorist groups and underscores the fact that these terrorist groups 
that claim to be Muslims have in fact no affiliations with Islam. On the contrary, their main victims are Muslims. The final products of the Human Rights Council are the resolution. So the last two, three days are for decision making on the resolutions proposed by the different member states, the different coalitions. So uh, when you are here, it seems all the time that we are doing a great blah, 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 you know, and uh, you are wondering what is then the impact of all this chatting among states and so on. Uh, but we think all the same that is important because uh, uh, the United Nations is the only global forum where all the states can come, especially at the level of the Human Rights Council. Crimes in the name of religion are never justified. Massacring innocent people in the name of God is not religion, but the manipulation of religion for ulterior motives. In fact, believers, both Christians and Muslim, have experienced a common tragic outcome at the hands of people who claim to be religious, but who instead abuse religion to make of it an ideology for their own distorted interests of exploitation and murder. In spite of the gloomy picture that Boko Haram paints about northeast of Nigeria, I want to talk about the new Nigeria. A typical example is the presidential election that just concluded, where the incumbent honorably and respecting the rule of law because the people have spoken. When I look at uh, our past, uh, the founder of ICRC was a man of faith. And at the same time, he knew that in order to do good humanitarian action in conflicts, you needed to have neutral, impartial and independent humanitarian action. Uh, in order to uh, not spur the conflict further, but to mitigate the consequences of violence. There's an ancient proverb that says you should learn before you speak and take care of yourself before you fall ill. Unfortunately, in most low-income countries, many health centers are unable to provide safely the service needed. The teaching of the Catholic Church that is for a just approach to these issues of sensitive attention to the neediest and the most vulnerable groups of society is one of the starting points for really changing, improving and strengthening the health delivery in the countries of the world that are in a development phase. Our discussions are a contribution to the World Humanitarian Summit process. Their synthesis will be reflected in a report to be submitted to the Secretariat of the WHS for further consideration by the global consultations to be held here in Geneva this October. We should do more to create platforms for engagement with the religious leaders at the international level. Let us be frank. Humanitarianism struggles today, and religious beliefs are being challenged. And very often both of these processes happen in the same place and are connected. Because we should promote one message, is humanity is for all. Humanity is not only for one religion, it's not only for one group, it's not only for one political party. Humanity, for, humanity is for all of us, and it's been created by God to, for us to share its resources uh, together. There is a general agreement that one strong driver of human trafficking is poverty and economic vulnerability. The Order of Malta's worldwide humanitarian action is aimed at alleviating suffering by lifting people out of poverty. Addressing the root causes of human trafficking through work directly related to poverty and the inherent dignity of the human being thus contributes to the prevention. Faith-based uh, organizations are the first um, organizations and religious personnel as well of any religious denomination are the first shop where the migrants turn to when they are in need. Existing human rights law, including non refoulement principle, does not provide a right to stay or specify the content of any protection. However, to be effective, it should be it should include non-rejection at the border and provide a basis for some form of complementary possibly temporary protection. Mi viene chiesto che cosa si può fare
perché la gente eviti di arrivare nei nostri paesi. The cardinal says that uh, it's time to consider migration not as an emergency but as a normal event. And the fact that uh, it is considered an emergency creates all the excitement and the lack of planning. But uh, the UN must become a protagonist in opening up uh, possibilities of exchange of views and the common search for solutions. The report also indicates the failure of Israel in a continued matter to investigate these massive violations perpetrated by the occupying power, which are tantamount to crimes against humanity. So Israel treats this report uh, as flawed and biased, and it urges all fair-minded observers to do the same. The situation in Gaza, it's not just really humanitarian, you know, food and destruction, etc. It's also a human rights problem. Otherwise, how it comes that since 2006, each, each two years we met and we discussed this issue. So if we want really to bring justice to the population, we have really to touch the main cause, the origin of this problem. There is a deep connection between our people and Jesus because our mother tongue was Jesus' mother tongue. Our Aramaic language was the second language of the Bible, it's the second language of the Old Testament. Books like Daniel and Ezra are written for a great deal in Aramaic. And the New Testament is full of Aramaic words, sentences, phrases. Just uh, recently, Pope Francis, he acknowledged the Armenian Genocide and the Syriac Orthodox Patriarch with, I think, a large delegation of our bishops and also uh, other patriarchs, the Syriac Catholic one and others. They went to the Pope and also asked him to also remember us in his praise and also acknowledge uh, not just the Armenian genocide, but also the genocide of the Arameans or Syriacs. People are, are suffering because of climate change and people are a unity where you cannot separate the uh, spiritual from the political from the everyday needs. Wie Franziskus im Sonnengesang as St. Francis sings in the Canticles of the Sun, the Sun Song, all creation are sisters and brothers, because they are all created by the one, the only God, and they are all interdependent. Uh, therefore, that means that especially those of us who are human persons uh, have to take a special responsibility for the earth, as God asked us to. And, uh, and it, it's more than just a physical responsibility. It's a real connection with nature as our mother, as uh, the, the force behind our, our world. Out of the 24 that have been adopted so far, 18 texts have been adopted by consensus and that is 75%. I think that's a, that's a good figure because it shows you um, that we are aiming at consensus if at all possible. As I always say, as much consensus as possible, uh, as much voting uh, as, as necessary. This is the position of the Holy See that is a few days ago signed an agreement, a comprehensive agreement with the state of Palestine. And uh, as a sign, as a will, to cooperate and contribute to a peaceful solution of the various conflicts in the Middle East. Alors, le prix a été créé pour uh, uh, récompenser et aider. This award was created in order to reward and to help groups, important persons or individuals who support dialogue in regions of conflict. This is the purpose of this prize. It's quite exceptional that these three religious leaders, the Interfaith Peace Platform, jointly help their three very different religious communities to find peace, dialogue and to prevent violence. The Interfaith Peace Platform was created right at the beginning of the crisis. The crisis started on December 10th in 2012. Five days after, the pastor and the imam met with me to discuss how to respond to this emergency and how to protect lives. Yes, it is in this context that we created this platform and in order to raise awareness so that our fellow countrymen are not be used by politics that try to use religion by all means. The Secretary General has scheduled the first ever World Humanitarian Summit next May in Istanbul. And let me one small quote from his remarks. The summit will focus world attention on how we can better meet the needs of millions of people 
affected by conflict, disaster, and crisis. I expect heads of state and government and leaders from civil society, the private sector, crisis-affected communities, and multilateral organizations to announce bold new ideas to help set the course of humanitarian action for years and decades to come. When you look at corporations, the, the best possible partnerships when are, are when they are acting in line with their competencies and they are helping us exactly in the areas in which they have expertise and in which they can provide us with the knowledge uh, the, uh, and the capacity uh, that um, will allow us to be much more effective in what we do. When a company is able to provide us with the kind of expertise they use in their own work, uh, that is where I believe the partnership is more relevant, much more than asking them for money uh, to support our activities. either as migrants themselves or as those working at grassroots levels with migrants and their families, these non-state actors have first-hand knowledge of the humiliating rejection and stigmatization endured by many migrants, of the oppressive and unjust work conditions often imposed on them, and of the life-threatening risks presented by many unscrupulous human traffickers and unjust employers. These abuses of migrants are intensified when their immigration status is irregular. Not only are they often denied even the most basic labor protections, uh, personal security, due process guarantees, health care, and in the case of their children, education, they may also face abuses at international borders, including prolonged detention or ill treatment. And in some cases, they risk being trafficked, enslaved, sexually assaulted or murdered. We need now to come from words to action. Hmm? And uh, indeed, we need some more political will. And, and on this, we think that also the order of Malta could contribute in building this pressure, uh, soft pressure, <laughs> on governments uh, to ask governments, actually, to take this uh, tragic issue more seriously. The task of the international community is to recognize that we are facing a global phenomenon which exceeds the competence of any one community or country. And in order to eliminate it, we need to a mobilization comparable in size to that of the phenomenon itself. The many efforts of the Catholic Church, especially on the part of women religious communities, to counter the modern form of slavery could be used as a best practice for other institutions and agencies. What is also particularly important is that um, last year the Global Accord that was signed, um, uh, fostered uh, by uh, Pope Francis, which invited a number of representatives of faith-based organizations to attend a ceremony honoring slaves in, um, in the Vatican City was particularly important. And for me, that was, it marked a turning point in the way in which, as society, we value our, our religions and our faiths. The complexity of interest challenges any attempt to dialogue and arrive at a ceasefire and putting an end to the violence. The emotional outflow provoked by the massive wave of refugees and asylum seekers reported in detail in the media distracts and diverts public opinion from looking at the root causes. It is like an empire of termites crawling through the holes of society. These are the invading and dominating international corporations who act independent from states. People are pulling strings behind the curtain. What we need to be doing is to be mobilizing people at, at all our national levels to be confronting our own governments about their participation in this uh, in this arms race, in, the, in this, these illusions about the security of getting more arms that everyone is, is living with. The increasing arrival of foreign investments into many countries further exacerbates the loss of lands and resources of indigenous peoples and leads to significant environmental destruction of their territories. Exploitation by the mining industry and the increase of foreign investments continue to deteriorate the human rights of indigenous peoples. 
This only hinders their right and capacity to pursue their own economic, social and cultural development. A more awareness of our people, not only the Arameans, but the Christian people in the Middle East. Normally you wouldn't hear them in a report or they were, were just a little bit muzzled in the back of a report. But now we see that the efforts we were making here are bearing fruit in the reports we're getting mentioned, so there's more awareness of our situation. It took 25 years for us to get a, a declaration. So I always say that the, uh, the United Nations uh, moves at the speed of a glacier, but it still moves, you know. And maybe with climate change it might move a little faster, but, uh, but it does move, you know. I, uh, today I have celebrated a mass, a special mass, let's say, because it is a mixture of Latin and uh, Melkite Byzantine mass, and mixture of languages, Arabic and French, mixture of art, of, uh, of choir, Latin, uh, Gregorian choir, with a Byzantine mass. I think that um, Halep, Halep was, which was a very important and very beautiful and very, uh, very rich and uh, culturally and archaeologically and in all men has been destroyed. The Holy See has long been an active observer at the United Nations. It plays a particularly important role in the promotion of intercultural and interreligious dialogue. The presence of the Holy See, especially at the Human Rights Council here in Geneva, is of the utmost importance to all of us. It shows that there is a determination on the part of the Holy See to continue to participate in the events, in the events, uh, in the activities, in the debates that take place in this unique forum, this unique arena that is made, that is the United Nations. Yes, uh, it's possible f for the OEC to become a member, but it's probably it will continue for a while the way it is, because it serves the Holy See well, the position of observer. It can intervene in all the activities of the UN bodies, and at the same time stay without the necessity of having to vote on every issue. we need to increase burden sharing. And that is exactly where uh, the Order of Malta uh, sees a particular role as a religiously based institution. We believe that local faith-based organizations should be included much more in these relief efforts in emergency situations. The number of meetings in which uh, uh, refugees were at the center of the discussions, the number of declarations from the Pope to the President of the United States to uh, all political leaders uh, having the refugee issue in the center of their statements demonstrates that now there is an opportunity to translate the fact that refugees are in the center of the agenda to create the conditions for that uh, agenda centrality to transform itself into a real commitment to address the plight of the refugees themselves. The royal family in the Netherlands, they were boat people. They left in 1940 when the war started with Germany, when Germany invaded. So I can say that, uh, that there is a family of boat people and they did quite well later. One became a queen, the other one also became queen and the, the great grand Son, he's, he's king now of the Netherlands, but in the, in the history of family, they were both people. Uh, it can happen to anybody of us. The open day is to show to the population that this building also belongs to them and that the work we are doing here has an impact and importance for their daily life. It is important that everyone understands this so that the support for the UN system is also as strong as possible. The role of religion in the United Nations is has been in the last, lately let's say, has, is increasing enormously um, due to, of course, what is going on in the world. We have a number of conflicts and crises that are very closely related to religious aspects. And it's one of the main um, 
uh, uh, contributions that the Order of Malta is presently making to the preparations for the World Humanitarian Summit is to include faith-based institutions and organizations in the localization of humanitarian assistance. There's lots of different ways that we need to connect and make sure people are able to prevent themselves from getting HIV and getting the type of care that they need. And our faith-based organizations have been our steadfast partners in doing that over time. They're really working with people and not just thinking about the disease. There are also organizations that really work with the culture of um, whether it's the town, the city, or the country um, in which people live, and it's so important. Other organizations might be able to give people pills, uh, but they need more than that. Uh, they need to feel the dignity of being children of God. They need to be assured that God is not punishing them in any way because the God does not punish people with an illness. And also that they're, uh, they're created in the image of God and that they then need to live in a responsible way so that they could fulfill the commandments of God. From a Catholic perspective, why are we involved in this issue? Of course, we have to be involved to make our world a better place, to translate the aspiration, the values of the gospel into reality. And as an organization in Pax Christi, we try to promote peace, witnessing the peace of Christ. Beyond the letter of treaties, legally weak or strong, all actors have a shared responsibility to protect each and every human person out of a shared common dignity, out of an ethical responsibility, and out of caring for the future of a peaceful and stable world order. Great principles cannot ensure fair and peaceful order if they are not effectively translated into practice. The practical implementation of international humanitarian law is the indispensable minimum against the inhumanity of war and armed conflict. Killer robots will take us away from the orbit of morality. It will eject us way out. And that is very dangerous because these principles of humanity, the fundamental morality that we have, despite all our limitations as human beings, that hold these things hold us together. This town is the operational hub of the international system. There is no other place on the planet where you have as many actors who touch the lives of people every single day on a whole series of aspects. All of those aspects that when you put them together like a puzzle becomes peace. Many of the things that have to be done historically about uh, terrorism have to do with so sociological, societal dimensions, uh, types of de-radicalization measures, type of issues that have been built onto communities, finding ways to avoid stigmatization, um, and some of it may be having to do with examining some policies that some states have to reflect on if they have worked or not. The cooperating, the collaborating between uh, religions in Iraq, especially Yazidis and Christians, Sabi Amandai, Baha'i, Kaka'i, Zoroastrian, it is very well, but they are small, they are not like the majorities. Confidence building measures, but meaning by that simply the human touch, the human factor. And uh, if uh, uh, you uh, respect someone from a different community, try to keep this contact and try to uh, develop a, a kind of understanding of what uh, he or she is about. This is a testimony, as a witness of how the Catholic community really reaches out to the needs of people without taking into account accidents of race or birth or nationality or ethnic identity. And, and we believe that the United Nations has a right and an obligation to look into those circumstances in the United States where there are laws that prohibit free parental choice. I hope that this solidarity with us from all around in the world should breed at the end of the day 
our dream, our goal to right to self-determination and to establish our independent state by ending the occupation and to sign an agreement with the Israelis and to live side by side in peace and security. So I think uh, definitely there is a spiritual battle that is uh, in the background. The spiritual battle is everywhere in the world, of course, but uh, there with particular intensity and I would say rage uh, because, of course, uh, the enemy, the big enemy of man, uh, was defeated there once and forever and uh, he does express his hate and his uh, rage for this. Uh, his time is now limited. Uh, he has been defeated once and forever and that's where it happened.